This will be a short tutorial for the two-way Gaussian relay channel and in particular I'm going to focus on relaying strategies for this communication network. The tutorial is outlined as follows. At first I'm going to introduce a network and illustrate with some examples the basic ideas or the basic principles that are behind the strategies. After that I will present the more realistic um, the more realistic channel model and then describe the relaying strategies. Then there will be a quick comparison in terms of what sum rates are achievable and then a conclusion. Okay, so the network model itself is pretty simple. Just imagine that you have three nodes or think of three wireless devices and what you want to do is you want to get one message from node A to node B that is now I'm um, attaching like a source node to this device and a sync node to this device and we want to get one message from A to B and we also want to get one message from B to A so we want to do like a message exchange and the thing is that there is no direct communication link between those uh, between those devices um, that means that the relay here is uh, becomes the enabler of communication. That means that any sort of traffic or any flow of information has to pass through this relay. And that's basically it. Uh, now we can, uh, with the help of some toy problems, illustrate the, the ideas that are behind the strategies. And uh, we assume that for a moment there is no noise at the nodes, that the nodes have binary input and binary output alphabets and that they are half duplex constrained. That means that uh, the, a node either listens or talks, but not both at the same time. And the model that results is uh, very simple, but nonetheless, it can illustrate the, the basic ideas that are behind, for example, network coding, and more importantly for this talk, physical layer network coding. Okay, so we start by exchanging two bits, and we do that with a routing approach. So how is it done? The first a uh, node transmits to the relay and the relay then does something which is called store and forward. In this case it reproduces a bit and now the user B has the other bit. And this uh, then goes in the other direction too, so B to R, R to A, and then we're finished. And this way we can exchange two bits and we need it for transmissions or think of time slots. And we can ask now, can we do better? And the thing is, yes, we can do better because the relay node can reach both users at the same time. So we might, we might use broadcasting, which can save one transmission. And the way it is done is with network coding. It uh, works, works as follows. The first user transmits to the relay, then the second user transmits to the relay. And the relay then broadcasts a combination of the bits. In this case, just computes the parity check and then broadcast this parity check. And now both users are aware of this parity check and then because they have side information they can then extract the bit or the message of the other user. And this, with this technique we, ju we just saved one transmission so we can now uh, yeah, exchange two bits in three transmissions or three time slots. And the question is, can we do even better than that? And yeah, we might even be better because uh, the relay doesn't need to know the individual bits. That means that there is no there's no sync there's no sync node at the relay, so there's no necessity for, for the relay to know the individual bits. And we can just ask what happens if we let the two users interfere. And I haven't really talked much about the interference model here or the physical layer model, but we can just assume that an ideal channel would just compute this parity check bit for us. And that's perfect because now the, the in one in one hop or in one transmission the relay uh, learns everything it needs to, to needs to know to make this transmission work because it just was tr transmitting the parity check bit eventually so here it just learns the parity check bit and then can just broadcast like in the network coding case it can just broadcast the parity check bit and then we can employ the side information principle again so that each user extract extracts the respective message of the other user and um, now we can if, if we assume this ideal channel then we can exchange uh, two bits with, with just two transmissions 
And the question now is uh, how does it work for more realistic channel models? And now I'm going to introduce a, a Gaussian, sort of Gaussian relay channel model, which is motivated by wireless communication. And this is obviously the same, the same network. And I'm introducing the messages, which are in, uh, defined in an in information theoretic sense. So they say these, these are now integer numbers over a finite message alphabet. And the objective is basically to make to make the message alphabet as large as possible. And then I'm going to make some further introductions, which is that each node is now associated with an input and an output a variable, a random variable. And now they, these are real random variables, continuous random variables. And then these channel attenuations, uh, these now should now represent uh, like the channel co um, coefficients or the channel conditions between those nodes. And then we introduce a noise, uh, Gaussian noise, and we come up with these three equations. The first equation basically reflects the interference nature of this network. That is that whatever the two users here transmit is linearly superimposed at the relay uh, plus noise. And then the, the other equations uh, reflect the broadcast nature of this network. That is, whatever the relay broadcast it is received uh, by the two users with their respective channel attenuation plus noise. And then we make some further assumptions. We assume that the channel coefficients are fixed for the whole transmission, so, so they are time invariant. Um, and by the way, we also assume that this is a general case, so there's no reciprocity assumed, so we can have four different channel attenuations. And we assume that the inputs are, all inputs are power constrained to the same average power p. And we assume that the noise variance is set to 1. And we say that the channel is used n times in total. Just imagine that there is a synchronous clock ticking for the whole network. And the clock in total it, it ticks n times. And after this n clock ticks, the whole message exchange has to be finished. And we keep up the half duplex constraint. Uh, we come up with a two phase protocol, which is that in the first phase, uh, which we call the uplink or the MAC phase, the two nodes or the two users transmit to the relay. And then in the downlink uh, or the broadcast phase, the relay transmits whatever it has to transmit to the two users again. And we allocate an uh, equal amount of um, clock ticks between those or dimensions between those two phases. But we're not time sharing between them, so it's just first it is uplink, then downlink, and then we're finished. And then we ask what are achievable rate pairs uh, measured in bits per channel use or achievable sum rates. And the first strategy is called amplifying forward. Um, and just to get acquainted with the block diagrams, I'm here I'm just reordering the nodes a little bit. These are the two users, this is the relay. And uh, now I'm switching to vector notation. That is that basically this is now the whole uplink. So uh, the, these vectors are dimension n half, so they are now con they now contain all the the channel uh, inputs of the two users, and they get linearly superimposed at the relay plus the noise, and then received by the relay. And in the second phase, the broadcast phase, uh, in this strategy is just the relay just rescales what it receives and it does so in order to match its own power constraints uh, constraints so it receives yr and then it just introduces this scaling factor that is computed in order to match the power constraint and then it can compute the what it transmits and the thing is that we can employ then the side information principles at the two users again because each each user knows what it transmitted in the first phase. So if it is aware of these channel coefficients, it can compute this gamma A and gamma B, and then it can perfectly subtract uh, or cancel out it, its own signal. And what we end up with is just a sort of a additive noise uh, channel where we can compute a sort of like a signal to noise ratio. And then we apply Shannon's formula, and then we uh, end up with this with these rates that are achievable. That is, this, this is now the 
the signal to noise ratio that is uh, that you can easily compute with if you if you just um, evaluate this with this scheme you can come up with this these signal to noise ratios and then you uh, this this pre-log factor is from the fact that uh, the one half is from the fact that we're using continuous or real valued and not complex valued random variables and the other one half is from the fact that these vectors are in dimension uh, n half and not in dimension n. Okay, so this is the first um, strategy, just um, yeah, analog uh, forwarding and then employing of the side information principle, canceling out the own uh, signal, and then we can compute this rate or these these rates. And the second strategy is called decode and forward which is that uh, now the, the back phase here looks the same but now it's uh, different in terms of now the relay tries to completely decode the messages it tries to be uh, completely aware of the messages of the two users and this is this is solved this is just a classical multi-access channel of uh, information theory and the capacity region is uh, completely characterized and here I'm just applying this region for the definitions that I made and um, yeah, and in the second phase, in the broadcast phase, we assume that the decoding has been uh, completed perfectly. So the relay is, no is now aware of the messages, and now this these messages have to be broadcast. And uh, this looks like a broadcast channel, but it is a broadcast channel with uh, side information because each user knows uh, which message it transmitted in the first phase. And this has also been completely characterized in terms of available uh, achievable capacity or yeah achievable rates and so you can also apply this region and here the minimization reflects the fact that whatever rate we have it has to be supported in both phases and uh, the the last inequality here uh, in this context, in the context of two-way two-way relaying, this has been termed the multiplexing loss, or this this inequality constraint leads to a multiplexing loss. And it's interesting because the the, the interpretation is that the relay the loss is because the relay tries to understand something that it doesn't really need to know. That means that it tries to understand both messages individually. But remember that there is there is no there is no sync at the relay, so there is no necessity for the relay to understand those messages, and we might lose something by doing it. And the physical layer network coding idea was that the relay should only try understand a combination, a linear combination of the messages. In the example, it was it should only understand the parity check. And for the more general case, it is possible to translate this combination of messages to the signals to the physical layer with the help of so-called nested lattice codes. Uh, 